Sometimes when it rains, it needs water. Good evening. Welcome to the Charter Township of Van Buren Planning Commission meeting for Wednesday, March 23rd, 2022. We have a uh, call to order, please. Start with a roll call. Jeff Jar. Here. Brian Cullen. Here. Lena Atkinson is excused. Callie Barr. Here. Kimmy Dixon. Here. Mary Bud. Here. Brian Kelly. Here. We have a agenda before us. I have a motion to approve the, gen the agenda. Mr. Chair, I move to approve the revised agenda. Support. Motion by Commissioner Jar, support by Commissioner Cullen. All in favor to approve the revised agenda, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing as none, the motion is approved. Uh, we have uh, minutes from the meeting of March 9th, 2022. Mr. Chair, I make a motion to approve the regular meeting minutes of March the 9th as presented. We have a motion by Commissioner Budd, second by Commissioner Garrett. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Seeing as none, the minutes are approved. Our first item on the agenda, item number one, is case number 22-011, TNT Fireworks for a temporary land use. The applicant TNT Fireworks is requesting a temp temporary land use permit to conduct a temporary outdoor firework tent sale. The location is 10562 Belleville Road. The site is located in the Walmart parking lot between the west side of Belleville Road and south of Tyler Road. The proposed activity is from June 22nd or June 22nd to July 5th, 2022. So a presentation from the staff. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, before us tonight, we have uh, we have uh, Mr. Freeze from TNT Fireworks joining us, and I'll invite him to share his comments. But what you have before you is a request for a uh, temporary land use for a fireworks tent, as stated by the chair. Um, I'll just go over some of the basics of the site and the proposal. Uh, this is a familiar site to the Planning Commission. This has been several years running at the Walmart site at 10562 Belleville Road. 
Uh, the fireworks tent is proposed in the uh, southeast corner of the parking lot. Um, I'll go through some of the findings based on the standards of section 7.120 of our zoning ordinance pertaining to temporary land uses for this proposed use. Uh, as in past years, uh, there's uh, the site itself has 714 public uh, parking spaces, uh, 23 of which are handicap reserved. The uh, proposed tent location and surrounding buffer that you see on the screen will occupy only about 16 parking spaces. So there's definitely sufficient uh, at parking and access available to the tent. The site has existing drainage for stormwater in its parking lot. And so uh, adequate drainage is provided. Uh, the surrounding sites uh, and parcels are commercially zoned and uh, are the proposed site is uh, for this tent is uh, compatible with the areas surrounding commercial zoning. With respect to size, height, and type of construction of the proposed buildings and structures in relation to the surrounding site, um, the site is temporary. It will be in a uh, large retail context and it will be um, uh, suitably sized in uh, relation to the surrounding uh, land uses. The site will be about uh, over, over 100 feet from the southern lot line and will be over 20 feet from the nearest service road to the east there. Uh, and so the, uh, su there are sufficient setbacks provided from rights of way and property lines uh, because the service road, of course, is separated even further by an outlot from the main road, which is Belleville Road. Um, this use will uh, provide its own electrical generation. There will be um, responsibility by the applicant to uh, remove and dispose of trash uh, in, con uh, in relation to their lease agreement with Walmart. Uh, Walmart has authorized uh, customers and TNT employees to use its restroom facilities, so adequate sanitary facilities will be provided. Uh, the hours of operation, I believe, are uh, stated on this, uh, sh on the screen here with um, the, the written submittal from the applicant, um, 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. daily. So those are consistent with store hours. And um, outdoor lighting and signs, there are no new outdoor lights proposed. Um, there is a um, current license that's required for a consumer fireworks retail facility that must be provided. Um, the, uh, th uh, that's with regard to other licenses and permits required. Um, the proposed use will not uh, generate significant odor, dust, noise, or glare in relation to the surrounding properties. Of course, this is not a site where fireworks will be lit, uh, so those, those items won't be a concern. This is just a retail tent. Um, fire lanes, fire protection, and security um, will be assured. The fire marshal has taken a look at this submittal as he has in years past. Um, in terms of off-site, Impacts of traffic volumes, the road, uh, which is Belleville Road in the immediate vicinity of the site is a major uh, township road. And this use will be minimal in comparison with daily uh, traffic generation on that road. Uh, and, and there's likely to be a lot of pass through um, uh, traffic going to Walmart also. The, um, there's a statement in our temporary land use requirements regarding the necessity of a performance bond to ensure uh, prompt removal that has not been uh, necessary in years past. The property owner will continue to be responsible for ensuring the site is returned to its pre-sale condition. Um, the other concerns that are looked at in this report include um, applicable regulations in uh, uh, under Act 256 and applicable regulations of the fire department. Um, one of the items that does come up with these um, uses over the years is the assurance that there will be three uh, exits and three fire extinguishers in the tent. And you can see in the written comments from the applicant that those uh, features will be provided. There will be three exits and three uh, fire extinguishers. And um, my recommendation is being that this is the eighth year of the TNT fireworks tent uh, without issue. I recommend conditional approval uh, for this use from June 22nd to July 5th, um, subject to the conditions that the applicant will obtain approval from the Van Buren Township Fire Marshal, and that all proposed signage complies with the zoning ordinance if there is any uh, additional signage onto the, onto the site. Um, if the chair would like, I can also summarize the Fire Marshal's comments for this case. Thank you. 
Sure. So, um, as in years past, the fire marshal has reviewed this plan, and uh, prior to operation, there are just some thing, some comments that the the fire marshal wanted to share. Um, the temporary facility and retail sales of fireworks must comply with uh, NFPA 1124, which is the uh, National Fire Protection Act, um, as required by the state of Michigan and the township of Van Buren. Upon approval from the state of Michigan Bureau of Fire Services and the issuance of a tentative permit to sell fireworks, the site will be inspected by the Van Buren Township Fire Department. Uh, and additionally, I'll, I'll mention the building official will do a, a typically do an inspection as well. Uh, and then a detailed floor plan uh, must be provided and kept on site um, at the time of operation. So with that being said, there's a conditional approval recommendation in your report. And um, I would be glad to answer any questions or have the applicant speak. Um, and uh, Mr. Freeze is here, and I'm not sure if there's anybody on Zoom as well, but. would like I can uh, bring him in to speak on this case as well thank you so much director power if uh, the applicant has anything they'd like to discuss or kind of run through us uh, run through things with us we'd love to hear from them uh, good evening everyone good evening good evening <laughs> I'm just here to answer any additional questions I think he did a great job uh, explaining my application there. And like you mentioned, we've had a good successful track record in the township. So um, I don't recall of anything that was a struggle. So I do appreciate that. And uh, like I said, if there's any other questions on your behalf, I'll, I can entertain those right now. All right, thank you so much. Sure. Do you have any questions or comments from any of the commissioners regarding this item? If anybody in the audience that has anything they'd like to ask or any comments, is there anybody or anybody on Zoom? There is a Zoom comment about uh, later in the agenda, which we'll address at that time, and then one other um, non-agenda item in the chat. So we, there are no comments on this report. Thank you so much, Director Power. Are we ready to take action? Anybody ready to make a motion? <laughs> Mr. <No>. Chair. <laughs> uh, in item one, case 22011, uh, I move to grant the applicant TNT Fireworks special land use approval to permit a temporary outdoor fireworks tent sale at the site located at 10562 Belleville Road in the Walmart parking lot uh, to be held from June 22nd to July 5th, 2022 based on the analysis and subject to the conditions detailed in the Van Buren Township Fire Marshal letter dated March 11th, 2022, and the letter from staff dated March 17th, 2022. Any support? Support. A motion by Commissioner Jar, support by Commissioner Cullen. Do you have any comments or discussion regarding the motion? Seems we have none, could we have a roll call vote please? Tamika Guerra? Here. Sherry Bard? Yes. Callie Barr? Yes. Brian Cullen? Yes. <coughs> Brian Kelly? Yes. All right, and the motion passes. Thank you so much for coming in this evening. Wonderful, thank you so much. That brings us to item number two under new business on our agenda. Case number 20-025, the DTE modular restroom edition. 
The applicant, Rudolph Libby, on behalf of owner DTE, has applied seeking to install a 1,285 square foot addition to an office and manufacturing building used by DTE. Uh, the address will be 8001 Haggerty Road. The development is located on the east side of Haggerty Road, just south of Decors. Our first item up is a presentation by township staff. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, thank you, Planning Commission. Uh, just to give a quick overview, I will um, have some images up available on the slides here uh, that I can go back to that I'll, I'll quickly uh, summarize. But uh, this is a over 26 acre site at 8001 Haggerty Road where uh, DTE Energy's Western Wayne Service Center is located. Uh, and the existing complex is uh, about a, a little over 116,000 square feet in area. So there's a lot that occurs at this facility. Um, this is a relatively very small proposed addition to that facility for a very specific need, um, which relates to, um, the applicant can say it better than I could, but relates to the need for there to be additional restroom capacity and office space in the warehouse portion of the site that's more likely to be used by field staff. So that's the, the basis for this review um, and, and really the focus of tonight's um, presentation uh, uh, in the context of the other uh, activities that are occurring at the DTE site. So um, quickly, I'll just show you the, the site context because this is a little bit confusing in a uh, site of this scale. Um, to the north of this image, you have Ecorse Road, and of course, to the west of this site, you have Haggerty. So the site is situated to the southeast of Haggerty and Ecorse. Um, what I'd like to point out is that the addition is, again, back in the portion of the site that is uh, used for uh, more of the field staff, and uh, it's back by the existing truck dock. So this gives uh, some, some perspective based on an aerial image. It can be a little difficult to interpret based on uh, site plans on a site this scale. So this just gives you perspective of where the proposed addition is located. Uh, more a, a close up of that. So if you look on the left side of this image, again, going back to this image here, what you're looking at uh, kind of at that west uh, left edge is the um, existing truck dock, uh, truck bays. And so the addition would be just to the east of that. Um, here's a elevation of what the uh, double trailer addition component of this would look like. And um, with that said, we do have a staff report. So there is another slide on here that has a more detailed explanation from the applicant. I'm sure they'd be happy to say that explanation here in the meeting. But um, at this point, I'd like to defer the detailed review comments to our planning consultant, Vidya Krishnan. Thank you, Director Power. As uh, Director Power summarized, this is for the DTE site that is zoned M1 light industrial and located on the east side of Haggerty Road. This proposed addition is an expansion of the existing service center building and it is permitted by right in the M1 district. The building addition is approximately 460 square feet in area and then the double wide trailer that's being attached is another 825 square feet. Although it is a trailer, since it's going to be here on a permanent basis, it is not considered as a temporary structure and is being reviewed and approved just like any permanent structure or addition to a building would. A little bit background on the DTE site, if the Planning Commission recollects a couple of years ago, you reviewed and approved an ASOC building on the site. That project, however, has been shelved and it is not going forward. DTE has been working on this project on a slightly larger scope for the past year and a half it basically involved two phases. Phase one was addition of this trailer with the restrooms for the field staff and also organizing all of that outdoor storage that you see on the right hand side of your screen by building proper racking system and repaving that entire area. That was supposed to be part of one phase. And the phase two was to increase the yard space further to the east and redo the whole detention pond. That site is really old and that detention pond no longer meets any of Wayne County's requirements. And Wayne County has made it necessary that DT now has to upgrade the detention pond to meet today's detention standards. So that is a lot of engineering. The applicant has been trying to work with Wayne County, uh, which is a whole saga by itself. So <laughs> at this time for them, the restrooms and the trailer are really an absolute necessity. 
So they have decided to split the project off so that they'll do the outdoor storage rack, which requires more paving, therefore more stormwater retention. They've decided to split that project off and come with it at a later date before the planning commission. At this time, the project before you is just consideration of the trailer addition only because it does not require engineering. It's on already existing impervious surface area. So they don't need to go through Wayne County or the township engineer. So the project is very limited in its scope at this time. The, all of the basic required information is on the site plan at this time. Um, all of the dimensional requirements for setbacks are met by the proposed addition. The overall circulation and access around the site is not altered by the addition of the trailer. We might have comments regarding the circulation around it in the future where they plan to put something further to the east of this trailer, but right now they are not showing it on this plan, so it's not under consideration. The proposal does result in the removal of some parking spaces, as you can see, to put the addition, but the site does have a surplus of spaces and it's mostly field staff who park and then take the DT vehicles and go out on the fields. So parking shortage will not be there. The site does comply with ADA standards for whatever ADA parking is required. The site is in an M1, uh, M1 district. Where the trailer is located, it is completely screened from view of Haggerty Road. But in the future, when they put in those storage racks, which will be up to 14 feet high, we have concerns about its visibility from I-275. There is a lot of shrubbery and wooded area along I-275. However, there are areas where if you happen to be looking directly, this structure will be visible. We will be reviewing the landscaping entirely along the I-275 frontage of the site when they come back for the larger project when they're redoing the detention pond. It does not make sense at this time to put that landscaping in in case the detention pond grading requires their removal again. With regard to lighting, uh, per the applicant, no changes or additions to site lighting are proposed. However, they do show a light fixture on the exterior of this building, and they did mention it that there is a fixture on the interior and also one on the exterior. For some reason, the detail was not included in the packet, so we want to make sure they submit it for administrative approval before installation to make sure that it is a screened and shielded light. The architectural details, as far as what we can require for such a small addition, have been turned in. The addition will be constructed of masonry block to match the main building on the site. The trailer is to be constructed of standing seam metal panels. Now, the previous iteration of the plan that was here showed a 28 gauge, what they called vertical ribbed steel skirt to cover up the frame and provide more aesthetic appearance. The applicant even described, uh, described it. However, the elevations that are submitted as part of this packet really don't show the base where the trailer actually sits on the ground. We still need to know, is what's shown on the image the actual grade, or it is my understanding the trailer is going to be up on poles, and those poles have to be concealed. Um, we are still not very keen on a ribbed skirt metal or not, because it does give a temporary look to it. If there is any kind of faux finish that makes it appear like the trailer is actually sitting on a masonry base, that is what we would recommend because it would help tie up the trailer better to the existing building than look so obviously like a temporary add-on to the building. There are existing dumpsters on the site um, that is not being reviewed as part of this project. They will be altered at a later date. The township has been working with DTE for a really long time on this project and due to a lot of issues, some of which were beyond their control and due to the fact that they had multiple projects with multiple engineering firms involved, there was a lot of confusion. So at this time, we are recommending that the trailer uh, addition and the building addition as shown on this site plan application is approved in its limited scope, subject to the installation of a shielded light fixture with administrative approval, planning commission approval of the building architecture, and clear understanding by the applicant that all other aspects of the site, which are including but not limited to the outdoor storage, racks, dumpsters, detention pond, and landscaping will be subject to full site plan review at a future date when they come before this body. I would be happy to answer any questions. Thanks, Ms. Krishnan. Uh, Director Power, do we have a report from the Van Buren Fire Department as well, correct? We do. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Let me just make sure I have that front and center. 
Um, there was an issue with the layout of the uh, proposed fire hydrant in or the existing fire hydrant in relation to this trailer that has been addressed with the latest version of the plan. So that uh, significant comment was addressed. And um, what you'll see in the fire marshal's letter dated March 18th uh, was that the uh, revised plans show the hydrant being away from the trailer approximately five to seven feet and that the steamer connections will need to face the access road. And as long as those uh, items are met, the plans will be approved. They're recommended for approval. Thank you so much, Director Power. Uh, that brings us up to a uh, presentation by the applicant. Chair, as mentioned to the applicant, we have all of your I have all of your plans on a PDF if you need to access any, any specific plan. Yeah, I think that would be helpful. Hi, I'm Barbara Reichwalder. I'm regional manager out of DTE's Corporate and Government Affairs Group, and I'm here with uh, Brock Bosek, DTE's uh, engineer on the project. So thank you very much for having us on the agenda tonight to discuss this project. And uh, just a, a brief overview, so, um, you know, Dan Power had mentioned that this is for our locker room and trailer project. Uh, so under paragraph 2902.3.4, the required public and employee toilet facility shall be located not more than one story above or below the space required and the path of travel to and from such facility shall not exceed 300 feet. So the, the issue of why we're requesting uh, and building this trailer facility the warehouse and fleet garage employees have requested closer restroom facilities. Currently, they're traveling um, from the south end of this of this building to the west side, which is uh, at a minimum of 500 feet or more. So again, the requirements are for 300 feet uh, or less. So the warehouse and garage employees travel through the service center shelter area. Uh, it is a safety concern for DTE. So adding this area in the locker facilities for the employees near the garage and warehouse uh, would be beneficial. It discourages folks from walking through one side of the building to the other. Uh, it would reduce potential congestion between the truck traffic and it does not increase the uh, impervious area of the site since the trailers are proposed to be built over an existing paved area that's already on site. So for further details on the project, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Brock for more explanation. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. Uh, I'm really only here, I guess, to ask, answer any specific questions you guys may have. So um, uh, I, I do have several uh, photos and uh, plans I could pull up, but I figured it might be better to just uh, answer any questions that come up. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, do you have any questions or comments from uh, any of the commissioners? Yes, yeah, thanks. Uh, Brock, if you could just, um, I see in the PDF packet that was distributed to the Planning Commission, the double wide is shown as a gray um, trailer, which is up on little pillars. Could you address the architecture for the Planning Commission? You're referring to these photos right here, these elevations or? Those were in your paper packet, but this was in your PDF that was distributed to the PC, the actual photographs of what the trailer looks like. Gotcha. W would it be possible for me to connect to the Zoom meeting and share my screen that way, or is that, I think I could pull. That is Director Power's expertise. Do you have a laptop? <laughs>
Brock, would it be helpful for you to just scroll through the PDF packet of tonight's meeting because it's got all the images on it? Oh, he's got more information, okay. Something that was included in the packet this year is just an overhead view of the floor plan, which wasn't referred to previously. Okay, uh, this is the more detailed drawing of the uh, elevation views uh, of the trailers. Uh, it looks like the skirting, what Vidya, you're asking specifically about the skirting at the bottom mm -hmm. of the trailer, is that right? Yes. Uh, this one is not showing that skirting here, so yes. it will essentially be the same material. Going back to the graph I had up here, um, the skirting is a 28 gauge, uh <coughs> excuse me, uh, it's a vertical ribbed steel. It's the same material as the trailers, so it'll extend the facade down to the ground level. That is the plan. I will update these drawings to these elevation drawings to show that more specifically, but that's the plan based on the trailer shop drawings and these also done on previous sites. Could pull up a photo of that, but I, uh, in a few I, I understand. I think on previous meetings, you have shown the trailer skirt. Uh, my concern is that even with a steel ribbed skirt, it still looks like a trailer, but your addition, whatever block you're putting, is it possible to carry that block? Don't you have to carry this block down the page over here, even if it is just something the trailer can rest on, to cover up the holes be beneath it so that it gives a look like it's actually part of the main addition itself? It, this is going to be there long term. This is not something you're going to pull off in a year or two. A steel skirt still makes it look like a trailer. So my recommendation would be just that masonry, whatever is there instead of the skirt, if you can add in, it definitely improves the look of the building for your long term too. I mean, I, I, <coughs> I don't want to speak exactly on behalf of GTE, but yeah, I mean, of course, if we, if it needs to match that building facade and, you know, add to the architecture, then yeah, we can make it happen, right? I think the planning commission would like that. Mm -hmm. I, and I, we appreciate your point that it, it, that masonry or, or some type of material there lends to the look of permanence exactly. to that and improves the aesthetic. So yes. that, that sounds good. And I'll try to see images on uh, your report there. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay, so thank you for your consideration. And thank you for pointing this out. That's a good point that needs to be helped with in the study for the future. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ms. Krishnan. Uh, do any of the other, yes? Yeah, so I just have a question. <coughs> if it's a permanent structure, why a trailer? Rather than found uh, permanent foundation and everything of that direction. Are you looking, is it time factor or? Well, it's a good question. <laughs> if 
you could come on up to the microphone. One thing uh, we didn't mention at the beginning of the meeting, if you're not speaking right into these, it's difficult to get on the video of tonight's meeting. So please do uh, just that, speak into the microphone. Yes. It, 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 it is a time factor. Um, so this, uh, we've been working on this for uh, a couple years now. Um, right now we're renting uh, bathroom trailers and it was time and cost of cost. Uh, the ground over there, there's some, um, we didn't want to get into contaminated soils and it, it's really a time fac factor. It, it would be a lot more engineering, just like we talked about those other projects that we have. Uh, with these trailers, it would be an immediate, um, to address that immediate need because again, we're going on a couple years with the guys from the garage, um, the, the guys from the garage and the guys in the warehouse, they're traveling across the truck shelter to get to the office space to use those restrooms. So this was the quickest way to give them a bathroom. Yeah, and I, I would like to add, one of DTE's main overarching goals is safety. Safety for our employees, for our customers. So when we're looking at this project and, and as John had mentioned, and as I had discussed earlier, one of the main reasons is one, to comply with that code, that the distance, but also for safety, because we're having a lot of folks traverse these really great distances inside the building, and you know there are a lot of trucks moving around on site, and folks are walking about on site uh, to try to go around to the entrances to, to access the restrooms, because of that safety issue, because of the vehicle traffic, um, that is why we're looking at this project to have this, this trailer to meet the needs, to be flexible if there's any future modifications, things like that, that we're not anticipating right now. Um, so for safety and for the timeliness of it, um, it, is a, it is our service center that serves all of Western Wayne County. Uh, it also serves up into Oakland County uh, so quite a few municipalities are served out of that service center. We, I don't know, I don't have the, at my fingertips the exact number of trucks and, and employees that are traversing a day, um, but you know that number is is significant. And um, you know with storm season coming in, uh, the summer season, and we're looking to have those those trailer and restroom facilities for our guys uh, and, and field gals as well uh, as quickly as possible. And I have one more. Yeah. Just, just wanted to add one more thing too. You mentioned foundations. Uh, so we will be putting in foundations and like Bridget was saying, making this a more of a permanent, uh, like a permanent addition essentially. Um, it's just, I, my assumption was what John was saying, that it's uh, it's more cost effective to, uh, to get a trailer that's like already fully functional as a locker room with the uh, mechanical hookups and everything, um, and then build that into the site um, on, uh, pile foundations. So that's shown on our, um, shown in the packet on, I think it's actually 2.1. But just, just to answer that foundation aspect of the question. Thank you. Yeah, Commissioner Jar. The, the restrooms in these buildings, they're plumbed into uh, city sewer sanitary. They're not, a, they're not being serviced buildings, they're actually uh, connected to the system, right? Yeah, I believe it's to the existing building. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, yeah it's all going to be. So it's essentially just a part of that building addition. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. Uh, you mentioned your name was John. What was your last name so we can add it in the meeting? Minutes? John Uize, U-W-I-Z-E-Y-E. And the first name is spelled like Jean, J-E-A-N. Thank you so much. Do uh, you have any comments from anybody in the audience? Or if, uh, Director Powell, if there's anybody on Zoom? We, we do have a Zoom comment, and I'm sorry to the uh, Zoom viewership out there. I'm gonna be kind of blocking you to read this, but um, there are no hands raised, but I do see in the chat that um, the comment specific to DTE from Stephen Dark is that uh, is 
Mr. Dark thinks that the township should reevaluate the ordinance that would allow a quote trailer unquote to become a permanent structure. I feel like it sets too low a design of a design standard. Thank you so much, Director Power. I've had no other questions. Are we ready to take action on the uh, request for, I believe it's preliminary and final site plan for this agenda item, correct? That's correct. <laughs> Mr. Dark. All right. <coughs> well, at, at this time I'd move to grant the applicant Rudolph Libby, uh, on behalf of owner DTE, preliminary and final site plan approval to install a 1,285 square foot addition to an existing 116,377 square foot office and manufacturing building at the site located at 8001 Haggerty Road based on the analysis and subject to the conditions uh, and recommendations detailed in the letter from McKenna dated March 17th, 2022. The Van Buren Township fire letter dated March 18th, 2022. And the letter from staff that I believe is dated March 17th, 2022. Noting the additional condition that the trailer skirting shall be constructed of a more aesthetically pleasing material uh, that is consistent with in appearance with the adjacent structure. Would that be sufficient, Ms. Krishnan? You could say the trailer skirt will be considered of the same masonry material as the proposed addition. I would say oh. that, that, <laughs> <laughs> that, that the skirt shall be composed of uh, the masonry material uh, with the adjacent structure. Uh, and that would be my motion. <laughs> We have support for the motion from Commissioner Dar. Right. We have a motion by Commissioner Dar, support by Commissioner Barr. Do you have any comments or discussions regarding the motion? Seems we have none. So a roll call vote, please. Sherry Bud? Yes. Garrett? Yes. Barr? Yes. Jim? Yes. Jeff Jar? Yes. Brian Kelly? And you, uh, motion passes, you are granted preliminary and final site plan approval for the structure. So on behalf of DT, we'd like to thank the commission. Thank you. Coming in. To agenda item number three in new business, case number 22-014, DTE electric tree removal permit application for 42061 Ecourse Road on the south side of Ecourse Road between Haggerty Road and Kirkridge Park Drive. The applicant, Christopher Becker, on behalf of DTE, is seeking approval for a tree permit to remove a total of 56 tree. Director Power. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Planning Commission, there is a slight theme that's emerging tonight. Um, the request that was just read into the record was a um, part of an, a revised agenda that the Planning Commission received yesterday. Um, so thank you, Planning Commission, for uh, considering this request. I'm going to um, put a few things up on the screen to go over my findings regarding this request. Um, this is, again, a request by applicant Christopher Becker uh, of DTE Electric for the removal of trees on a property located at 42061 Ecourse Road uh, as regulated by section 8106, 8.106 of the zoning ordinance, um, tree removals can be considered as a standalone request by the planning commission. To give a little bit more uh, site context, uh, I would like to just point out uh, this site may be familiar, should be familiar to the uh, members of the planning commission who have been around for six months or so. There was a uh, rezoning petition that was requested and recommended and then adopted by the board for this site by DTE to uh, make way for a future substation at this parcel. It was rezoned recently from C1 to M1 for that purpose. So there will be a substation that will be constructed at this site. Now uh, the request before you is to have a um, separate request for the tree clearing 
And the reason for that is because of the phasing needs um, related to the substation. There is some uh, environmental remediation work of the soil that needs to occur. And in the area where that needs to occur, the trees need to be cleared. Um, and at the same time, a comprehensive, uh, fully engineered site plan is being designed by the applicant that will be presented to the Planning Commission, uh, to my understanding, in the near future, uh, within the next uh, couple of months uh, estimated at, at the latest. And so um, the uh, request here is to uh, initiate tree clearing to make way for um, the work that needs to be done pursuant to getting the site ready for construction. So I'll go through my findings on the, the merits of the tree permit, uh, tree removal permit request based on, again, section 8.106 of the Van Buren Township Zoning Ordinance. Um, the uh, applicant has provided a complete tree survey consistent with the requirements of the zoning ordinance. In your packet, there's a small printout of, in your, excuse me, in a, your revised packet, there's a, a digital version of the um, topographic map that shows the existing conditions, which is a direct uh, excerpt from the proposed site plan for the project. And that existing conditions uh, plan shows uh, survey information and top top topographic information as well. Um, the shape and dimensions of the site together with the existing and proposed locations of structures and improvements, including building and driveway envelopes, um, has also been provided uh, and also shows existing and proposed utilities. Um, and that's in a site plan dated February 2022. The location and dimensions of all setbacks and existing and proposed rights of way uh, for the proposed uh, and the proposed easements are also included on that site plan. The existing trees on the parcel shall be inventoried by actual field survey and shown on the topo topographical map by type, location, and crown spread and drawn to scale. Um, this information is all provided on what's called a tree plan, um, which is also um, annotated in a list that's submitted separately. And on here, you can see the approximate surveyed locations of the listed uh, trees uh, in that inventory. Um, there's a comment regarding uh, the isolated uh, trees shown on the topographical map um, being tagged uh, in the field with identifying numbers using non-corrosive metal tags. Um, to my understanding, these numbers that correlate to tags for the trees, uh, is that right? And so um, these, these are also on the plans that were uh, submitted, these tree tag numbers. All existing trees proposed to remain to be relocated or removed shall also be uh, designated by the identifying number. This has been uh, demonstrated. If existing trees are to be relocated, the proposed locations of such trees together with a statement setting forth how such trees are to be removed, protected and or sorted during land clearance, uh, development and construction and how they are to be maintained after construction um, should be provided. Um, there will be not uh, relocations of these trees, but there will be replacement trees proposed uh, to be located in a uh, site that is uh, subject to approval by the township, but has been preliminary discussed with staff, and that will be Van Buren Park in the fall of 2022. Uh, and then the last comment regarding the inventory and survey of the trees is that a statement setting forth how existing trees not to be relocated are to be protected during land clearance development and construction on a permanent basis thereafter, including the proposed use of tree wells, protective barriers, tunneling, and or retaining walls. Now the developed portion of the site will really have uh, basically wholesale clearing by, by necessity. Um, so that's really the northern um, section of the site. So there really won't be individual trees um, in the inside of the limits of disturbance in that area being protected to my understanding, uh, but there will be a soil erosion plan that addresses measures to uh, separate the development area from the remainder of the site. And there will be significant trees preserved in the uh, southern portion of the site. Uh, now moving into um, the standards for tree removal under section 8.106I of the zoning ordinance. Uh, the first standard pertains to the uh, protection and conservation of natural resources from pollution impairment uh, or destruction is a paramount concern. Therefore, all woodlands, trees, and related natural resources shall have priority over development when there are feasible and prudent alternatives on the site 
for proposed buildings, structures, or other improvements. Um, this site, to my understanding, is an optimal location for the needs of the, uh, the power that's provided by the proposed substation. Um, I know that DTE has worked closely with relevant agencies, including EGLE, which is the state's environmental agency, to ensure um, adequate protections to um, the greatest extent possible of the site's wetlands. Uh, and additionally, the site's rezoning allowed for there to be some additional preservation by virtue of a, uh, what ended up being a reduced front yard setback, therefore allowing the site to be more confined in the front. So based on the overall site selection and layout process, uh, I think that this standard has been met because it is clear that um, feasible alternatives were reviewed and this was the, um, the best way to preserve the most uh, natural features on the site. Um, the second comment pertains to the integrity of woodland areas being maintained to the greatest extent uh, reasonably possible, uh, regardless of uh, whether such woodlands cross property lines. Uh, again, the, the proposed substation site is confined to the northern portion of the parcel, um, which preserves wetland and, and some trees in the southern portion. Now, um, where the uh, proposed activity consists of land clearing, it shall be des uh, limited to, and there are some areas um, that are defined as, as uh, where the clearing should be limited to. And clearly on this site plan, the, the limits are around the substation structure footprint and the necessary access areas around the substation. So the uh, required limit areas have also been met. Um, where the proposed activity involves residential development, uh, the structures shall, uh, to the reasonably extent feasible, be designed and constructed to use the natural features of the site. This is not applicable. There are no residential areas. Um, and then I'll go through, there are uh, several criteria that shall be uh, used as, as instances where tree removal uh, is uh, required and, and allowed. And one of those is when necessary for the location of a structure or site improvements and when no reasonable alternative location for the structure or improvements can be had without causing undue hardship, um, consideration of all development options which are available uh, under the zoning ordinance. So in this case, due to the um, site selection needs and um, the limits on uh, the area of impact on this site, uh, I believe this, this criterion has been met and therefore um, it makes a justification for the tree removal. Uh, it's in this, the removals uh, adjacent to the substation site are also required for the uh, maintenance of the overhead power lines. So based on a uh, review of the proposal, um, I recommend to the Planning Commission the tree removal permit subject to some conditions um, in my report. And I will clarify one condition that uh, I would actually uh, recommend is altered, and that is pertaining to the, the timing of submittal of the final site plan for Planning Commission consideration. This first condition was um, relevant to a comment from the applicant about the uh, anticipated timeline for submittal. Um, and and I, uh, that comment was meant to ensure that we would get a complete submittal for the site plan so that we had some uh, progress on the development of the site uh, before there was a commencement of clearing. But um, that is uh, sort of a redundant condition in relation to a condition pertaining to a performance bond that can be used to ensure that the um, removal of trees is, is uh, handled appropriately and that in the event that for whatever reason um, there needs to be replacement tree funds or um, restoration of the site that we can get a bond for that if, if the scope of this project changes. So I don't think it's necessary to require that the site plan be submitted prior to the commencement of clearing. However, I do have some other conditions in my report that I'd like to discuss. Um, again, I would like to work with the applicant to evaluate a suitable landscaping performance bond to cover any restoration work that is required in the event that the substation construction does not commence. Um, the applicant has indicated that they're uh, ready and willing to submit the uh, required fee per tree under our, um, under our tree removal policy, which is $350 per tree. And we can uh, evaluate the details of that uh, bond, um, the, the per tree fee in addition to any restoration on the site. Uh, the other uh, two conditions, the first one is that the timing, specification of trees and exact location uh, of the proposed replacement trees must be reviewed and approved by staff prior to planting. 
And then uh, the last condition is that a tree removal uh, permit fee has been preliminarily assessed with this application and any required permit fee must be tra uh, paid prior to tree removals. A uh, check was submitted by the applicant, so that condition is essentially already addressed. It just hasn't been processed yet. Um, so with that, um, this is a, a somewhat of a unique request for a tree removal permit separate from a um, site plan. But given the phasing and timeline needs of the applicant and the uh, completeness of this standalone tree removal permit application, I thought it was appropriate to uh, recommend proceeding with this in the, in the spirit of um, efficiency and based on the completeness of the application. So uh, with that, I do recommend conditional approval. I'm glad to answer any questions that the Planning Commission has. We also have the uh, applicant here tonight to discuss it. Thank you, Director Powers. Um, the presentation by the applicant regarding this agenda item. So again, um, Barbara Reichwalder, I'm regional manager out of DTE's Corporate and Government Affairs Group. First of all, I would like to express on behalf of DTE our heartfelt thanks to the commission. Thank you so much for revising your agenda and getting us on uh, tonight for review of the tree plan removal. We're very grateful. As Commissioner Power mentioned, this project is for construction of a DT substation. We name our substations. This one is going to be called Morton. The purpose of the Morton substation is to support the economic development and growth of businesses in the township. Uh, this project will help ensure the reliability not only for that customer but for other customers in the area. So they will see greater and enhanced reliability of power uh, for the area. Uh, did want to again thank you and I'd like uh, to introduce Chris Becker. He's our manager of our engineering who will provide some of these specifics uh, around the information. And again, we appreciate this because in the timing, uh, is, uh, as Dan Power mentioned, uh, we are looking to get this substation constructed and get this customer, get the customers online as soon as possible so that they have the power needs met. So that they can become an ongoing business and contribute to the tax revenues of the township. So at this point, I'll turn it over to Mr. Chris Becker. I'm a walker. Um, I just wanted to real quick talk about this um, because I can't walk away from the microphone. I will draw your attention to, you know, on this drawing into the upper left-hand corner, there's kind of a series of dog prints or whatever you want to call them on the drawing. That boundary between the property line and that dashed line going around the thing, that is actually the wetland area being preserved. Um, we have everything we need from Eagle. We're just waiting on them to actually sign the Eagle permit and send it back for the wetlands. The other thing that's out there is, as Dan, Mr. Power, Director Power talked about, is we did receive today the soil erosion sediment control permit from Wayne County, um, and that does establish the the, the edges of the, the dark, dark black line. We are leaving the trees along the drains on the on the west side. We have no no work over in that area except for if you look at the dashed box over in the corner. There's a sidewalk we got to run. That sidewalk is a we require we're going to have to put a bridge over that drain so that any trees that are in that obviously can't be there. And then that other dashed little box that's to the left of the, that looks kind of like, mm -hmm. I don't know, mail, a mailbox maybe. Um, there's a conduit that is being installed and it goes underneath the drain there and it comes up. And so there's a bore pit that's about 20 feet. We would be taking trees down in that area too. Um, those will come kind of like second, second phase, third phase, whatever you want to call it. We are not using a utility exemption for any tree removals on trees on property. Um, so that's why that conduit, is, the trees in that are be, were included in the numbers counts. Um, we're, we are taking a total of like a, oh, I'm going to mess this up. It's either 115 or 117, um, of which about half are removable, half are replacements. We will be working over the summer with the Parks Commission, I think that's what the, per, the people's name who are going to thing, 
to work out the landscaping plans and things to get those trees worked out at that at the park, which is kind of interesting because from what I understand, it used to be a DTE park. That's even <laughs> funnier. Um, so that's where that's where we're go we're going quite rapidly. There are trees that will be added as required as part of the landscaping that don't get the count. Um, so we we are currently working with Crossroads South. That's the property to the immediate east because um, we're improving the shielding on that berm and then we've worked out what's going to be in the front so anyway any questions from the group okay thank you so much uh, any questions comments from commissioners all right thank you for your time yeah. thanks for working this in thank you so much for coming out this evening all right, do we have any questions or comments from anybody in the audience? Or is uh, anything on Zoom? Okay, thank you so much. Uh, one more time, any, anything from any of the commissioners on this agenda item? Yes, Rick. I have a question for Director Power. Uh, you had said that you did wish to alter some of the requirements in your letter. The only requirement uh, that you wanted to drop was the requirement for site plan approval before clearing could commence. Yeah, the, the requirement that I'd like to drop pertains to the, the timing of the submittal of the site plan. Essentially, I was asking that the final um, Plan, final site plan to be reviewed by the Planning Commission is issued before the tree removal commences. I'd like to remove that condition. Okay, thank you. Did you not also mention that we had a check for the, the last one, the tree removal permit application fee? We, we do have that check, yeah. yep. So that's kind of a redundant condition. I just wanted to see on, on here. I missed that. Was that if there's if we were going to make a motion, would we want to specifically drop your point? Yes. That's that would be fine. We are we do have the payment, so that that condition was that can be removed as well. So the conditions two and three would remain. Conditions two and three would remain. One and four would be dropped. That's sir. correct. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Hypothetically, are we ready to make a motion on this uh, agenda <laughs> item? <laughs> Hypothetically, Mr. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Chair. <laughs> Mr. Jar. <laughs> if no other commissioner would, would like the honor, I at, at this time. <laughs> You've written it well. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. Uh, sure. At, I would in the uh, item number three case 22014. I would move to grant the applicant, Christopher Becker, on behalf of DTE Electric, approval for a tree permit for the removal of 56 trees at the site located at 42061 Ecourse Road, uh, based on the analysis subject to the conditions in the letter from Director Power dated March 22nd, noting that conditions one and four in his letter are to be dropped. There we go. Uh, Commissioner Jha, just yes. a clarification. You might want to say 56 regulated trees because they're removing a lot more than that. The rest are just not regulated. So just for clarification, 56 regulated trees. I would uh, be happy to modify the motion to say 56 <laughs> regulated trees. Yes. Absolutely true. We don't want them to get that wrong. Thank you. Uh, do we have support for the motion? Uh, a motion by Commissioner Jar, support by Commissioner Cullen. Do you have any comments or discussion regarding the motion? No comments or discussion. The roll call vote, please. Callie Barr? Yes. Julie Barrett? Yes. Sherry Bud? Yes. Yes. Jar? Kelly? Yes. 
and the motion passes and the tree permit is granted. Thank you so much for coming out this evening. And again, on behalf of DTE, thank you so much to the Planning Commission and to Director Power for all of your help and especially your flexibility for uh, allowing us to come in tonight. Thank you and have a great evening. Thank you as well. We're on to number four on the agenda for new business. It's discussion regarding the Sumter Road Mixed Use Zoning District and Sumter Road Overlay District. I think, uh, Director Power, do you have a presentation for us or uh, some comments? I do have some comments. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. I would like to um, really just take this opportunity to uh, bring us into the, the second big wave of uh, planning efforts related to the Sumter Road Corridor. And, and uh, as the Planning Commission knows, we recently recommended release of the Sumter Road Corridor plan. Um, for envisioning uh, future vision, future land uses, future options for mobility, and um, a zoning plan for the Sumter Road corridor to give uh, life to the, the different uses along that corridor and to give uh, opportunity for future growth and redevelopment. The way that that plan actually gets implemented is through zoning. Zoning is the tool that's used to implement planning. And so um, the purpose of tonight's discussion is to start to introduce a comprehensive update to the zoning ordinance to uh, consider the different tools uh, made available to bring that plan to life. And um, by and large, it pertains to identifying permitted uses, permitted building types, um, and dimensional requirements based on where within the proposed Sumter Road mixed use district a specific lot is considered. And um, I really don't have a uh, graphic presentation tonight. What I have is in the packet. If you go to the, the, the back section, um, you'll see some materials from, from me uh, and from Ms. Krishnan uh, that show uh, kind of an outline of how we'll go about reviewing this. Um, as with the mixed use zoning district that was written for Belleville Road and the Belleville Road overlay district, um, this is a lot of material. And so I'd like to just take this as an opportunity to present the material to you, um, or rather give you the material and, and leave it with you to start to review it more in depth and pro to provide, provide some comments on it over the next couple of weeks. And then what I'd recommend is that we come back at a later meeting um, with uh, some concurrence on the, the text of the ordinance on um, the first the first section, which is the Sumter Road Mixed Use Zoning District. So um, to back up a little bit, the Sumter Road Mixed Use Zoning District is again the uh, building types, permitted uses by right and by special land use and setbacks and dimensional requirements based on uh, our, what's called a regulating plan, which is an identification of different areas within the district that different lot types fall within. And then later we'll also discuss what's called an overlay district, the Sumter Road overlay district. Um, kind of like the B rod that we're all familiar with, this would be kind of the S rod and it provides some additional design standards for every property that abuts Sumter Road, um, which would be applied more generally. It's, it's more architectural and landscaping and lighting um, and those kinds of aesthetic treatments along the corridor. But again, the first step is let's um, take some time to review the uh, materials in the Sumter Road mixed use district. Um, if you flip to a page in your packet that um, at, right after my report, you have kind of a three page worksheet you can use to start to evaluate um, what you have here is a table. Um, and I can, I'll put this up on the screen actually just so everybody can see this. Yeah. While you're doing that, I, I just want to, <laughs> Overlay districts are confusing. Zoning itself is confusing, and when people hear overlay, they're like, what's going on? I mean, we have a zoning, what is this overlay thing? So put it simply, the Sumter Road Corridor Plan, it is using a tool which we call form-based coding. The Sumter Road Corridor has got four different types of lots. They are the anchor lot, the shallow frontage lot, deep frontage lot, and land lot. So now we have four different types of lots. Each lot has got its own advantages and each lot has got its own disadvantages. 
having a single ordinance that says this is what you can and cannot build is not going to work. This is not something where one recipe will fit all because these lots each are so unique in their own thing. So by dividing them into four categories, we have then developed a series of building types. And these building types are designated based upon which of these four lots they will fit in. Mm -hmm. So say you own a landlocked parcel. It'll tell you in a landlocked parcel, these are the four different building types that can fit in. And in these four building types, you cross-reference and you say, these are the uses that can fit in. So it's basically like a connecting series of dots. If you happen to be one of those who owns like two shallow lots right along Sumter and Hull, and you're like, you know, what can I do with this lot? What can I build on it? Because traditionally saying 50 foot front, 50 foot rear, it's not going to work. So you pull up this corridor plan, it will say, you have a shallow frontage lot. You are allowed to build these three different styles of building. You're allowed to have these types of residential and these types of commercial uses. So it's basically a user-friendly form-based code. That's what the Sumter Mixed Use District is. The overlay that comes on top will now tell you the next step, just like we did for the B-Rod. It'll tell you your building should have at least this much brick. It should have these features that will make it blend well into the Sumter Road corridor while not detracting from its rural residential character, which the residents who have lived there for a long time pride themselves on. We want to get development there, but not alter the way the area is. We want the people to have that rural feel while still existing in suburbia. So the overlay district hopes to accomplish that by saying, you know, you can build a cottage style building. So a cottage style building is not necessarily all brick, but it'll have elements of a cottage that will still accommodate a business, but will fit in into the residential area where it's located. So with the mixed use district that is underlying and the overlay, um, you basically will have the base recipe and then you will have all the garnishes on top. It'll give you a full, full dish, <laughs> so to speak. So just to simplify it, because when you hear overlay, even planners who have worked for a long time in the field, when you hear overlay, when you hear PUDs, you're like, uh, 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 it's like one over the other. So which one is effective? What am I supposed to follow? So that's what this is. And Director Power has worked to create this little table, which is just fantastic, which, which is so easy to read and helps you understand. I have a, you know, a landlocked parcel. I can build these three. These are the uses I can put in. It helps you market it, and it also helps you decide what business you can operate from there. Thank you. Ms. Krishnan, that was a really good explanation. Yes. Quick question, then, then when we create these ordinances, they will apply just to the Sumter Road Correct. corridor. They can't be used anywhere else. With no, they cannot. Just, okay. just like the Belleville Road overlay district, the B-Rod specifically goes from Ecorse Road, both sides off, Belleville Road, it picks up the parcels on either side till just south of the I-94 South Service Drive, only in that corridor. You're one property out of that corridor, those overlay design standards do not apply to you. Okay. Thank you. Here, just to Sorry. add on to that, that was a really good overview by uh, Ms. Krishnan, and I just, um, I wanna walk you through just one example of how you might use the materials that were provided tonight. So. The, the actual ordinance that's being proposed is a series of uh, pages that begin here near the end of your packet, uh, beginning with the proposed section 3.121, the SMU district. And there's, uh, let's see, a good 19 pages of text in, in just that set of ordinance amendments. So the idea behind your packet materials is if you look um, where, the, where the pages start getting numbered, these pages one through six are really meant to um, show you the contents of those, the much longer zoning ordinance um, language. And the way you'd use something like this is you'll see what we've identified as a certain type of lot under the Sumter Road corridor plan. In this case, what you're looking at here is what we'd consider the anchor lots, which according to the plan were the lots near Sumter Road and Hull Road, and also the lots near Sumter Road and Bemis Road to show you some examples of where um, these standards will apply. So now that you have some geographic orientation that you're at the anchor lots near um, Sumter Road and Hull Road at the southeast and southwest corners, if those properties were to be rezoned to Sumter Road mixed, SMU, Sumter Road Mixed Use District, then uh, a developer, a resident, would have an option to propose a uh, building type subject to site plan review 
Uh, and that building type could be one of many on this uh, menu. And based on uh, the building type, certain setbacks would apply, and the setbacks are referred to in this section of the table. Certain height requirements would apply, and those height requirements are referred to in this section. And then certain types of uses would be permitted within those buildings, and that's where our table designates whether it's uh, residential, office, commercial, institutional, um, or excuse me, industrial, um, recreational, or uh, community or institutional uses. And um, I won't go through the, the details of the ordinance, but um, within those uses, we're, we're identifying uh, a variety of uses that are either residential office, uh, traditional commercial, uh, excluding very automotive centric uses like uh, drive through restaurants, uh, new gas stations, big box retail, industrial at a very limited scale. Um, so we have a specific type of uh, extremely light manufacturing industrial uh, use definition that's included in this set of ordinance amendments, uh, as well as some other um, kind of uh, niche industrial uses like um, uh, related to the service industry. And uh, those are those types of uses are identified and you get to see which, which types of uses go within different types of buildings. So this type of worksheet will be provided, uh, there will actually be four of them because there are four different lot types. So um, what I'd like to do is to just uh, use that as a basis for you understanding more about the materials tonight. And then by the end of the week, you'll have worksheets for all four lot types. And I'd ask for your review of this Sumter Road mixed use district over the next couple of weeks so we can start to get into work sessions where we kind of break it down section by section. That would be my recommendation so that we can have our first real, real work session at the next meeting. If you could just mark up wherever you think you have a question about why a particular requirement is being suggested or you think it is, it's too less or too much, if you would just mark up and do your notes, it will help Director Power and myself uh, either provide you with an explanation for why we are recommending that particular requirement or maybe it's something that we had not considered and we can alter it and make sure that the ordinance is what we want. D Director Power, do you want us to submit uh, comments direct to you, to your office or? In the meantime, if we're catching things that we have questions on. That would be great. I'd, I'd recommend um, giving me just a couple more days to get some more worksheets out by Friday. And then within a couple of weeks from today, if you could give red lines on the, the whole um, zoning ordinance amendments in preparation for the meeting on uh, what would be April 13th, we'll, we'll tentatively plan to have an, a work session to go over at least uh, part of it. We'll probably just go into two of those lot types um, at that first meeting and then we'll repeat the process once we get your feedback and break it down bit by bit because it is a lot to, to do all at once. Question, <clears throat> that uh, east side of Sumter Road is so jagged with between Belleville and Van Buren Township. Do we know which buildings are in Van Buren Township that are existing there and which ones aren't? That's a very good question. We do have a live map that was made in the middle of this master plan uh, process that um, I'll have to make sure is still accurate, but it, it will be a link that I can share with you that you can zoom in just like a Google Earth and, and see which parcels are designated as which lot type. So that should help you to orient to what, what you're looking at as p potential future uses there. I know there has been some construction that's gone on um, where they've cleared some land. Is that in the city of Belleville where they've done the clearing currently? It is just barely, yep. And okay. that's part of this jigsaw, uh, <laughs> or, uh, uh, yeah, uh, the, yeah, kind of the puzzle mosaic of what's on the east side of the road there. That, that parcel, that back portion of that property is actually in the city of Belleville. Thank you. Any other questions, comments from any commissioners for Director Power or Ms. Christian? I'd just say that it's uh, it's a lot of a lot of data, and I'm really looking forward to to going through it. I know at the last time we 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 worked on the Sumter Road overlay, I said, "Oh, I'm really looking forward to the uh, to the nuts and bolts of the ordinance." Well, boy, I <laughs> well, I got it. <laughs> so thank you, and I will look I will look at my. If I may say, comments. this is actually an interesting read on form-based code. If 
if at all you had to read a form-based code ordinance, I would suggest this one because it's really well written. I have seen somewhere, I have to pause and go back and say, what did I just read? So <laughs> this is very well written. So I think you'll enjoy actually getting introduced to form-based code. Yeah, I'm looking code. forward to it. Thank you so much, Director Bao. All right, and uh, we're up to our item number five, planning commission meeting time. Uh, Director Power, I believe this is a presentation by you as well, correct? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, there has been uh, some interest in a earlier meeting time as we approach another 9 p.m. Uh, weeknight. Um, so what I've done is I've asked our planning commissioners to consider uh, different times that they may be available to meet. Um, I want to definitely be respectful of everybody's uh, needs. The fact that you're all on this commission means that uh, you probably are already pretty ambitious and you probably have a lot of commitments. So um, we appreciate your flexibility. We wanted to consider, um, of course, when a time when all the planning commissioners would actually be available. Um, and then also a time that's still accessible to the public, of course. So um, we considered a few times, um, we ruled out, ruled out at this point four o'clock as a start time because that's just too early for some of our commissioners and maybe an issue for some of the members of the public. Um, but we are considering uh, five o'clock, six o'clock and kind of status quo, which would be 7.30 or, or maybe seven o'clock, um, which is most similar to the current meet time. Based on the results I've gotten, um, it sounds like 7.30 could still work. Uh, five o'clock could also work. So I would ask the planning commission to, to kind of have, have an open discussion. And if there is concurrence on a five o'clock start time, what we would need to do is uh, just uh, recommend uh, approval of a resolution that I've included in the packet. It's a very simple resolution that we would use to uh, take to the board and get the official meeting time changed. Um, take that to the board of trustees for the official uh, time change. So I guess I'll open it up to discussion among the uh, planning commissioners. Thank you so much, Director Power. Um, I guess the way I feel about it, I'm good with moving the time. The one thing I want to make sure is that everybody can make that time. If there's one person that can't, then I don't, I'm don't. i not for moving it. I, don't, I want to make sure no one is excluded or doesn't have a problem with it. So if we're going to be moving it, it's got to be something everybody's, everybody's on board with. So um, how do we feel about 5 o'clock? Anybody have a problem with the 5 o'clock start time? Uh, yeah, I think I can do five. I'm good. Five's okay with me. I would also ask uh, that we pull our uh, consultants and not just the commissioners, yes, but yes. you know, without without certain members of our <laughs> extended staff, I think we would be. Uh, Director Power was kind enough to check with me and Paul Kimmer, the Fishbeck engineer, and both of us are open to any time the township wants us to meet. <laughs> <laughs> Four, seven, five's fine with me, guys. <laughs> Even though I am available, I am available at five o'clock. But will we consider five thirty just to give that time for if part of the public who may work till the five o'clock hour to give yes. them um, opportunity to come? Um, so I, I actually am proposing five thirty. Mm -hmm. A lot of offices are nine to five, so maybe five thirty might not be a bad idea. Yeah, that time, a little leeway to get through traffic. As long as they're not traveling two seventy five. I have no problem with five. Or five thirty. Or five thirty. Five thirty, five thirty. Yeah, five thirty. I'm fine. okay with five thirty. Okay with it, yeah. All right, looks like Med uh, Medina okay with five thirty. She said uh, she is easygoing. She said she is <laughs> open to any idea. I, uh, I like point. the idea of being able to leave a meeting when it's still the sun is still up. <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm moving it to a little earlier. I think is a good plan. Um, so what would our process be from here, Director Power? I would just ask that you, so there's actually nothing in our bylaws that's specific to this that I could find, but there is in the general township ordinance for our, our commissions and boards that says that the planning commission by resolution can adopt uh, hours and, and days of meeting. Uh, and then I've, I've talked with uh, members of the board and, and uh, also understand we, sh we need to take to this to the board. So. My recommendation would be, if you want to move it to that 5.30 time, just um, have a motion adopting resolution 
uh, Planning Commission Resolution 2022-02 to amend the meeting time to uh, 5.30 and just make sure we note who's um, uh, making the motion and seconding the motion and uh, doing a roll call vote for it. Okay, thank you so much, Director Power. So this will go to the uh, uh, Township Board for approval. Do we have an idea of when you're hoping to have this go into effect or is it that's kind of a to be determined? Uh, I will plan to try to get it to the board at their first available opportunity, um, which they meet on April 5th. And I know there may be a pretty, uh, depending on the agenda load for that meeting, this is a pretty uh, minor item, but I'll try to get it on that April 5th agenda. If that's true, then it would take effect uh, as of uh, April 13th. So I'll let everybody know. And of course, we'll let the public know by updating our website and uh, posting the, the meeting well in advance. Thank you so much. Um, so are we ready? Would it be appropriate to uh, solicit any public feedback at this time uh, on this on this discussion item? We have the Zoom. We have some members of the public in attendance. Great, great idea. Yeah, just since you asked, um, I would say I echo your 5.30 start time. You know, a lot of offices go till five. It makes sense to kind of add a little uh, dollar time. So I think that's a good idea. Thank you. Some feedback from an, an applicant representative. Yeah. 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 From the engineers <laughs> this evening. <laughs> it's okay with you? <laughs> did uh, Director Power, did you happen to have any other feedback from anybody else or any when you're kind of feeling this out of timing? Um, our other support staff here tonight, I think, uh, wouldn't mind. <laughs> and I also heard from our communication staff. So there's more to this than just us. I, we appreciate our communication staff over the years always being there to, to record all the meetings. And they're out there. They're in the back. So I think they'll appreciate it, too. They, they've expressed it. They, they've kind of asked me about it a couple of times. So of I think they'll, be, our they'll be happy with that as well. Yep. Okay. <laughs> well, I would be I would be happy to do it if no one else <laughs> would <laughs> like to have the honor. <laughs> well, then at this time, uh, I would move to adopt the proposed Planning Commission Resolution 2022-02, recommending approval of a revised meeting time for regular meetings to be held at 5.30 p.m., on the second and fourth Wednesdays of each month, subject to approval by the Van Buren Charter Township Board of Trustees. Support. Support. Go ahead. Commissioner Garrett. So I got a motion by Commissioner Jar, support by Commissioner Garrett. Uh, roll call vote, please. Sherry Budd? Yes. Tamika Garrett? Yes. Callie Barr? Yes. Brian Clark? Yes. Jeff Jar? Yes, uh, a motion is approved. All right, we are up to general discussion and updates. And Chair, I'll use this opportunity to uh, pose one other non-agenda uh, comment from Mr. Dark tonight. Uh, non-agenda item, are there any updates on the potential Senior housing project located northeast of the corner of Morton Taylor and Tyler Roads. Have they submitted any uh, official site plans Vouchers. yet? Yes, they that's a good question. So um, there is, uh, no, that's actually a really good comment because I think Mr. Dark is referring to another plan that we have a conceptual yeah. version of. Um, and, uh. and he happens to live in a um, neighborhood that's adjacent to that. So. We at staff level have um, begun 
taking a preliminary look at a, uh, uh, I forget how many units, o over over 100 units on a large acreage property that's just I west of- I think it's 144 of, units, if I'm not mistaken. That sounds right, yep. So it's just west of um, Hickory Ridge uh, condos. And so there's a large undeveloped parcel there. Uh, we've started to take a look at a conceptual layout for that. Um, they haven't made a formal application yet, but they will. Um, but one of the things that they've done is to go out and, and start to engage with some of the uh, neighboring homeowners associations and condo associations. So um, there's been some preliminary feedback uh, from those groups. So we'll, we'll be sure to update the Planning Commission um, should they decide to either do an informal work session with you or should they bring a direct um, full site plan submittal, which is what we think they're going to do. They are, um, they have been working with Eagle also to try and map out the wetlands on all the property and make sure they're aware of the drainage issues in that area. So I think they're looking to submit full and come before you directly. It is zoned multiple family, correct? The property it is, is zoned multiple family. Yes, it's zoned RM. And they are looking at senior independent, not dependent, senior independent. Otherwise, no updates from staff tonight. All right, thank you. Uh, any committee for general discussion from commissioners? I have one comment. I know that in uh, item number two, Mr. Dark made a uh, Zoom comment uh, about the prefabricated building setting a low design standard. Uh, I, while I don't have a comment on that specifically, I did want to acknowledge that uh, I did I did hear your comment, Mr. Mm -hmm. Dark, even though I didn't. Uh, didn't say that in the in the motion. I did hear it, and thank you very much for taking the time to let that opinion be known. Appreciate it. Okay. Anything else from any of the other commissioners? I have a motion to adjourn. I'll move. Commissioner Cohen. <laughs> Support. Yes. Commissioner Barr. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> We're adjourned. Your clean sweep was disturbed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you gotta go quicker. I gotta be faster. <laughs> but you're the only one that can do that. <laughs>